Hello everybody, this is Anthony Green, Associate Artistic Director and Co-Founder of Castle of Our Skins. On Easter this year, I gave an Instagram Live piano concert, a little bit of a listen and learn recital for you all, and it was Castle of Our Skins' first completely digital event. And I was really happy to be the person to give this event, despite these very strange times we're living in right now. And I wanted to just say that because this event was uh, given on Instagram, the live stream erased after 24 hours and there wasn't a permanent document of it. So first of all, thank you to those who tuned in. And for those who couldn't tune in, I created this video for you to check out the pieces that I played and to perhaps learn a little bit about the composers and their music that they left behind in this wonderful, wonderful classical music world. So also thank you to those who donated. We raised a wonderful amount of money for Castle of Our Skins that will be used to support our future online programming for this season. Um, hopefully not for next season, but that all depends on how the world um, and how the United States treats this situation right now. Hopefully we will we'll, we will return physically and we will come through this situation so that we can present some wonderful, wonderful programming for you in the fall. But until then, all of the money that is donated to Castle of Our Skins will be used to support our online programming. And we have some wonderful, wonderful events planned for you all online. So if you feel like donating, please visit www.castleskins.org and follow the prompts to donate. You'll see a link below in the YouTube comments, uh, sorry, in the YouTube notes, as well as notes about the program. Um, before I share with you the videos, I wanted to also say that I was scheduled to perform this concert in Michigan for Garrett Schumann's Apex Contemporary Performance Ensemble. Um, Garrett Schumann has been doing some wonderful research into 19th century black composers. And there was a piece that I played during the I Am A Man concert presentation um, that, I, that Garrett found, and I used his research to program that piece, uh, Warbling Mazurka. And um, I'm, I didn't play it for this concert, but the Estelle Ricketts piece, as well as pieces by Blind Tom, fall right in line with this research of 19th century black composers. Um, so th with that, the program that you are about to see and hear consists of 19th and 20th century black composers. Uh, and of course, it's all piano music. But one striking thing um, about these pieces are the evocative qualities of each piece. So the first piece, the Rippling Spring Waltz by Estelle Ricketts, really does capture this sentiment of 19th century waltz, saloon waltzes. Um, Estelle Ricketts according to Wikipedia, was the only person in her immediate family that knew how to read and write. And this piece is the first known published piece by a black female composer. I especially love this piece and the implications of this piece. I want to know more about Mrs. Stell Ricketts and who inspired her, who influenced her, and if she knew any other black women composers at the time who haven't really made the history books. Wonderful, wonderful research still to be done. The second piece is by Blind Tom. It's called The Battle of Manassas. And 
This piece is one of the most extraordinary pieces of music that I know. Not only was Blind Tom such a gifted and naturally talented creator, but this piece contains some extended techniques that were used about 50 years before uh, the composer Charles Ives uh, used the same techniques. And many people credit Ives as being the first composer to use such techniques, but that's not true as you're, as you're about to hear and see in this piece. Um, it was composed in 1861 after the Battle of Manassas, which was a part of the U.S. Civil War. And it was a bit controversial um, because Blind Tom, who was enslaved all of his life, was autistic, and he had no real consciousness of himself and his situation. So during the Battle of Manassas, the Confederacy won, and after Blind Tom played this music in many, many concerts throughout the United States and even in Europe, local black newspapers in the South, um, they they didn't support Blind Tom. They thought that he was a tool, he was being used, and that probably caused a lot of tension and perhaps contributed to um, the lack of Blind Tom's um, popularity amongst black people in that day. But, as you'll hear, this piece is such a genius piece and a testament to the unacknowledged creativity that should be further explored and further researched. The next piece is Mother's Sacrifice by L. Viola Kinney, born Lady Viola Kinney. This was a prize-winning piece, and unfortunately it's her only surviving piece. There's a wonderful recording of this piece by Maria Corley, which you can find on YouTube, and you can purchase the CD and support her artistry. The next piece is A Suite in the Bottoms by the Canadian-born composer Robert Nathaniel Dett, or R. Nathaniel Dett. Um, he was a fantastic composer and also a very gifted pianist. He performed in Carnegie Hall to rave reviews. And while he's mostly known as a choral uh, composer, his piano pieces were also highly respected during his day. Even Percy Granger has a recording of the last movement, the Juba Dance of this suite, which comes directly from Juba Dance that was created by enslaved people in the United States. Robert Nathaniel Dett was fascinated by African-American folk music and used this as a source for much of his original music. And then the concert concludes with the incredible Troubled Water by Margaret Bonds. Margaret Bonds was also a fantastic pianist, a student of Florence Price, who is a composer who's getting so, so much um, attention nowadays, well-deserved. Margaret Bonds was so talented that when she wanted to study with Nadia Boulanger in France, she received a note that said, I'm sorry, I don't think I have the ability to teach you because you already are a mature, gifted, well-rounded composer and you won't benefit from my tutelage. She worked a lot with um, dancers, and she was active in the Harlem Renaissance. She was friends with Langston Hughes and set much of his poetry to music. This piece, Troubled Water, is also a testament to her abilities as a pianist. You'll hear the virtuosity of this piece. It also makes me think that she, she had very large hands because there are some chords in there that are even difficult for my hands which are quite big so she must have just had such a natural ability for the piano and i'm so so glad that she composed for the piano because it lets us into her world of pianism as well as her creative world so without further ado 
<clears throat> enjoy the concert that I gave on Instagram Live on Easter Sunday this year. Um, and please check out the notes that are in the uh, comment, well, the note section below this video, and click on any link that you want. And if you feel like donating to Castle of Our Skins, please click on that link and give what you can. All right, without further ado, here is 19th and 20th century blackness.
Thank you.